Transgender women will still be allowed to play women's rugby at all non-international levels of the game in England for the foreseeable future. Rugby Football Union decided that more evidence was needed before implementing a ban, which is sharply at odds, by the way, with World Rugby, which last week ruled that trans women could no longer play international women's rugby. A major review of the latest science found that the risk of significant injury to women was far too great. Not, though, applying to the domestic game. Dr Nicola Williams is director of Fair Play for Women and campaigning against the latest move from Rugby Football Union. Nicola, good afternoon to you. Nice to have you with us. So broad, tell us broadly then, um, what are you making of this? It's been a long journey to even get to this decision. It has. And, you know, I think England rugby have... I've thrown away a golden opportunity here to make the, the women's game safe and fair. They were they were handed it on a plate by World Rugby. They did uh, the most amazing, um, comprehensive and open um, and transparent review of the science. Um, I was there at the meeting. So was, so was um, England Rugby. Uh, they saw the science, they saw the issues. And, you know, World Rugby um, decided that it would be unsafe and unfair for their professional women to play against people who were born male. Um, and that's common sense. You know, we all know why that is unfair and unsafe. And the idea that England rugby won't extend those same protections to um, amateur players at club level is, is, is not right. Um, and, you know, I really would call on England rugby to, to think carefully about what they're doing here because it's not fair on most of the women that mm. play rugby um, who play at club level. And it's interesting because I, I looked into this story a little while ago and I was I was kind of interested by this. And, and the debate, of course, manifests in other sports too, as, as we are aware. I, Sharon Davis in Swimming has talked about this quite a bit as well. And whilst you know, some of the detail requires, you know, a, an expert eye across the stats, um, some of it, and I think you just alluded to it there, is just pretty darn obvious. And you might think in something like this, particularly when there's a health and safety component at play here, and we're living a fairly litigious time after all, why they came to this decision. Bearing in mind there was a body of evidence, well-researched evidence, that had literally just been released. Uh, oh. But the, de the decision was taken to go the other way. I mean, that's curious and, and maybe slightly dangerous. Well, it is dangerous. I mean, women, you know, there's a risk now of women breaking their necks, getting paralysed. You know, this is not trivial stuff, but, you know, it's it's always thought of as some kind of balance between, you know, inclusion of trans people versus the safety of, of women and girls. And, you know, there is no balance to be made there. Safety must always prioritise inclusion. Um, but remember that, you know, trans women aren't prevented from playing rugby. This isn't a ban on all trans women playing rugby. Mm. They can play in their male in the in the in the male category. Um, and so, you know, why is it that women um, are asked to expand expand their category um, to include members of the opposite sex? Why isn't it um, men who are being asked to expand their male category to include other gender identities? That's the obvious way to go because men aren't going to be put. Um, at risk um, from um, tackles with other trans women, but women clearly are. So, you know, World uh, Rugby have done the right thing and England Rugby really do need to think carefully about this. And in t I mean, I'm bound to ask, do we, do we have any idea how many trans women there might be in this sport who want to play for women's teams, uh, mm. but were born men? I mean, I, my instinct tells me it's probably very few. Yeah, I don't think we know the exact numbers, but, you know, it doesn't have to be many. Because course, if you're yeah. in a game, uh, you if a woman turns up to play at club level and there's somebody who was born male in the opposite team, um, what's she going to do? You know, she yeah. has to play that game or forfeit it or lose her place in the team. So it's not really up to the individual women to have to work out what to do. It's up to the national governing body to set clear rules that are sure. fair and safe. And that's what England rugby had the chance to do, and they failed on this. So I really hope they think again, um, and they look at the, the good evidence that there is and make a clear decision now. Um, because at the end of the day, women's lives and um, health is, is at risk here. And if, if England rugby actually support women 
in rugby and they want to promote the, the female game, they can't they can't not have a safe and effective policy for them. They, they have to do this right. Yeah, no, I, I, I would completely concur. It, it seems like a no-brainer to me that, that, that we would, the fact we're even having this conversation is slightly curious in that respect. Um, however, I, I mean, is it possible that they've sort of caved into certain narratives and sensitivities? I mean, if, look, I, I discuss this issue in lots of other areas of life as well on the programme. I know what it's like to get a barrage of abuse from people who think you're not... Um, you're not taking the stand you should be taking in the the modern world it's not progressive etc you know jk rowling is person non grata doubtless nicola you'll get a bit of stick as a result of your position on this do you think that's perhaps what uh, the rugby football union were thinking well i mean they shouldn't bow to pressure I agree. from um, transgender lobby groups because the you know a, a national governing body needs to set fair rules so it needs to stand up to opinions that um, would would mean that their policies would be would be wrong. So I mean, a lot of people talk about inclusion. It's it's about we needed to be um, inclusive of, of trans women, for example. But you know, it what about women being included? Um, that's the whole point of the female category. It's to allow women to be included into a sport yeah. and. The most effective way to make sure people are included in sport is to have a safe way for them to play. And so upholding the, fem the safety of the female category is the most inclusive policy um, that, that England rugby could have. So yeah. I mean, that's know, the right, idea that's... that this is progressive is, is ridiculous. Uh, correct. What's progressive it, about women being injured? It's, it's bonkers, isn't it? And you know, that's why there is a male game and a female game, of course. You know, if there, if there wasn't and it was all one game, we wouldn't be having this discussion. But of course, you know, there are, uh, there, there are obvious differences there. Nicola, we will watch with interest and I'm sure we will speak again on this. Thank you. Um, it sounds to me, that's Dr Nicola Williams, who's the director of Fair Play for Women. They're campaigning against the latest move by the RFU, who've gone against uh, what was decided by world rugby and that's that transgender women would not be able to play in the women's game on the basis that they were born men and the basis that they are in rugby terms likely to be even bigger units than their counterparts because of their male birth physicality um, the sheer strength and testosterone levels and everything that goes with it uh, that are still live and well but of course for the uh, for the trans lobby, this will be, I mean, you can only imagine what is happening uh, in, the, in the spheres of some of those shady groups uh, that give J.K. Rowling stick. They'll now be giving rugby players stick on the same basis. Uh, and the clue is in the word woman, and some people don't like that distinction. Or the word man, whichever way you choose to look at it.